back to live with, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is a legend in the bodybuilding world. He is an icon. He's been competing for more than 50 years. He's back, way back from Arnold Schwarzenegger's time. He made the comeback when he was 40 and won the Masters Olympia title. He's pretty much done it all in bodybuilding. He's lived the Venice lifestyle scene. I um, got him here today because I want to find out what's going on in his life and how he looks so great at over 70 years of age. Welcome to the show, Robbie Robinson. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Robbie, you, I can't believe it because after all these years in the sport, um, you know, you're what, 73 years of age now, you look great. You, I see the pictures you put up online. You're still shredded. You got great muscle. You still probably get the best peaks in bodybuilding. How do you do it after all these years? How do you still look so great? I want to be the black. I want to be the black Jack Lane. <laughs> black Jack Lane. <laughs> <laughs> I back, wanted to be. Back up a little bit, Robbie, so we, we can see you. There you go. I wanted to be the black Jack Lane when I was a kid growing up because I grew up watching his shows. Okay. And during that time period, I kind of adopted a lot of the things that he was doing, all the push-ups and chin-ups and stuff like this. And his heavy belief in nutrition, how important nutrition was. Right. Because he looked excellent to himself at that point. And I was probably maybe seven or eight years old, first black and white television in my family living room. And I'm sitting there watching Jack. So, <laughs> I, you know, um, I, I grew up kind of sickly. I didn't know what the problem was. I grew up kind of sickly. I didn't know what the problem was. And um, I didn't find out that until I got to here, like with uh, with the with the Weeder boys. Right. And then uh, I remember getting a, a blood examination, and then they start telling me that you know I had like sickle cell anemia. Oh, I didn't and know I that. Thought, like, Interesting. I thought, I thought, well, what the hell is that? You know, I thought, <laughs> hey, that must that must be something pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> so and, yeah, uh, for, you know, that, for yeah, I, and I got you from that point on. Dave, you, and the, you know, all the bodybuilding community out there, I start jumping with Jack every morning. And I thought, like, I was thrilled by how I felt. And see, back in those days, uh, the wood floors were, like, made of wood, right? you know, in, in my community. And, you know, I would be sitting there sweating like a pig. <laughs> but, I, but I loved it because I start feeling better. And yeah. I thought it's all movement. If you keep moving, you know, being active, you know, having a certain balance of nutrition in your in your, in your eating, eat good, healthy food because that's where it all started. That was my base, and I'm seeing how healthy he was and how he was eating and how he talked about the importance of all these things. Hmm. So what I did is I just followed Q. I went from jumping with Jack, sweating on my my mother's floors, and she kicking me out of the house sometime, and then um, I started picking up train wheels down, which was like at the lumber yard along the tracks. I started picking up these train wheels, and then I collected an old bar. You know, they had the metal bar, which had to hang the telegram poles to keep it in the ground. <laughs> right. I got one of those, burnt the ends off it. That was my first weight. Wow. And so from there, I start working 10 sets of 10s for each body part six days a week. Uh, wow. Push up with the weight on my back, chin ups with the weight. And um, for some odd reason, my physique just reacted to that naturally. And I really do think it has a lot to do, Dave, with eating healthy food. It's very important to keep that nuisance in there right. um, because that's what actually builds the body on a regular basis and it keeps the muscle cells growing. I think it keeps the muscle cells growing and flushed out. And I kept saying, you know, I'm going to see what I can do when I retire. Can I regain that body that I had back in the 70s and the 80s? And I started to think, okay, when I first started out, I noticed that my clothes that I had been wearing, Dave and the audience, that it didn't fit. And I thought, okay, what the heck is that? <laughs> I'm thinking that I should keep my muscle because right. that's the way it was, you know? And then I um, start to get back into the working of all of this. And then I realized that the most important thing is your health. You know, I love bodybuilding. Sure. You guys out there, I love it. I think passionately. I'm up four o'clock every morning with Michael O'Hearn in that gym banging on <laughs> Michael <laughs> so that, That's the, funny. You and Michael he, Hearn yeah. open that gym every morning, right? M Michael, Michael is just, he's a beast. I mean, yeah. he go in and he do a lot of, you know, heavy weight, low reps, because that's how you're going to build it. You can't build it right. that other way unless you're down into that, maybe that last 90 days or that last eight right. weeks. Then you get into that reps and sets and then maybe increasing the protein 
and stuff like that. But we're in there every morning banging it up, you guys. You have no idea. The guy is a beast. He trains hard. And at my age, I think keeping moving. As you get older, you got to keep moving. Yeah. You can't just sit around. Do you still lift stacked. heavy weights, Robbie, or are you doing more reps nowadays? No, 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 no. I'm using I'm doing five, four, three, two, one. This is basically what I've been doing. And then on the uh, regular days, I'm going in there. We do a lot more reps, too, at the same time. Really? So I kind of combine heavyweight, low reps, light, medium weight, high reps. I go back and forth like that probably gotcha. every week. But I, I, I really do believe this main thing is nutrition. Mm. If you keep that nutrition in there and the older guys out there are talking about you know, these aches and pains, but you got to keep moving. Do you, you have any jo- do you have any joint pains or any kind of injuries? Never had any. See, that's really? what I'm saying. Never? never? I've never had any elbows. Wow. Or shoulders, knees, or back. And I think it all boils down to, again, the body position and how you lift the weight. It's awesome. very important. I mean, to learn the mechanics of what you have to do right. to avoid injury. Um, I think really do believe it's a combination of just good nutrition. Uh, I've never really been into protein drink, but they can be applied. And if when I apply them, it's basically when I walk the treadmill. That yeah. way I'm burning that process off. This is how I believe it. You know, it's a, it's a synthetic food, so if I'm walking a treadmill for 15 or 20 minutes up and down, or uh, minutes at each level, then I think my body should be able to burn and handle that protein and turn it into muscle. What, what's, a typical, what's a typical day of eating like for you nowadays at 73 years of age? Mm, I think in the morning I have something like nine eggs, three yolks. Um, what is it? I have a whole grain bread that I use uh, with cashew butter, uh, sometimes a meat patty, sometimes not a meat patty. I kind of, again, a variety because the more variety sure. I think you have in that whole uh, um, message center there is to keep things alternated. So the more you alternate things, I think really the muscle cells have to flushing out and a pulling in. That's what I believe in, that the body rotates and absorbs those nutrients on, you know, on a regular basis if you got it organized, but it's something you have to follow you know, on the pattern. Right. What what would what, what what will you eat after that? So you have breakfast, then what do you have? Lunch when well, you get my back? My next meal is probably um, something like uh, a cup of jasmine rice. I'll have basically green peas or broccoli. Uh, and I'll have probably either a turkey patty, six ounces, four ounces. I rotate four, six ounces. Uh, either a beef patty, four, six ounces. The next meal is probably a salad. I have either turkey and eggs with Romani lettuce, lettuce and tomatoes and carrots. Nice. Uh, my last my last meal comes around probably probably five egg, white, uh, five egg whites in water with uh, a small five ounce salad. So you eat what, about four meals a day? I probably eat four to five. I rotate. I have a lot of I eat a lot of cashews, which is good for the mind. You know, people yeah. don't realize all this and thus these fats. Uh, I probably have that probably maybe twice a day. I have cashew butter basically as a as a filler in there to keep the body pancreas. I'm breathing so much insulin because I'm not eating, you know, a lot of food. I'm just eating smaller amounts right, of food. Right, right. I gotta I send you. I gotta send you a bottle of my macadamia nut oil. You'll love it. Say it's, again. I make a, a macadamia nut oil. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. It's I gotta great, send you a bottle of that. I make yeah, it for my nutrition company. You'll love mm-hmm. it. It's phenomenal. Yeah, it's great. It's it's. Um, I use a. People talking about injuries. I think I've used black seed oil for probably 20, 30 years. Wow. Yeah. Oils are important. Only. People, I, I believe important. that's the longevity. It, yeah, that's the key. I think it definitely increases the longevity. I think it also strengthens the body. I think it definitely helps the joints keep being, you know, keep them lubricated. Right. Uh, I combine black seed oil with probably, uh, what is it, um, Carlson's cod liver oil, mm. lemon flavored. So right, I go right. back and forth between all these oils and fats to also keep the body sustained in itself. I agree. Good let's, fats. Let's step back for, in time mm-hmm. for a minute. Go back to mm-hmm. your, your one of your first contests. Do you remember what the first show you ever did was? Yeah, it was uh, Mr. Florida. I was down there with Stan Maury. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you um, win it? No, I came in fifth and won all the body part awards. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> arms, that's for sure. <laughs> How do you that, win all you the know, body that, part awards, but don't win the but don't win the <laughs> overall? You know, I, you know that was just how it was back in the day. There wasn't really by that time there wasn't really a lot of of uh, Afro American guys in bodybuilding. I was probably right. the only one really there, going all over the South competing. Uh, you know, just for the fact I just love to compete. I love right. to do, 
to show my body and see how it gets better and, you know, impress and inspire people, Dave. Did, did Robbie, did you encounter a lot of racism early in bodybuilding? You know, I just think it was jealousy. I don't, you know, racism has a different kind of tone. I mean, yes, I endured it, but the, the thing of it was that, you know, I, I didn't fight back. I didn't say anything. They said whatever they wanted to say. And right. I just kind of eased out of the door, back to the car, and try to get out of town before sundown. <laughs> right, right, right. Did you notice? But that's it? how it was. But see, David, that's how it was. When I was going through some of those areas, those areas have signs on the tree. Excuse my language, guys. Yeah. No niggas in town after sundown. Wow. So we really? would go, we would go in, compete, and I said, hey, guys, let's get back to the border. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't realize let's it was get that back bad. back to the border. But David, that was how it was. You know, I think a lot of it was just a sense of jealousy. You see a person comes in there and they have a physique like that. And, you know, they're not, the drugs hadn't even come into my mindset yet. Right. I thought you just trained and ate. Right. It had right. no, it had no. It had so you were no, 100% natural at that point, right? Yeah, I was 100% natural. And I was beating these guys and I'm looking at them. I know there's something they're doing, but I'm not doing it. Right. So I thought, hmm, I wonder what that is. I didn't find out until I came out here with the Weedy Balls in 75. <laughs> <laughs> what year was that that you first started competing? It was probably like in the 60s. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was doing it like in the 60s. Okay. Uh, going all up to Alabama and Georgia, Mississippi, places where we wouldn't really go in and come back out. Yeah, you were like, yeah, but most black people didn't want to go in those, into those towns. You were going there and taking your clothes off and posing on stage. You were crazy, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I love the day because it was, it's like a, it's, it was, it's like a, it's something I wanted to do. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to make a name for myself. I wanted mm -hmm. to do, you know, good things, inspire and motivate people. Right. I thought that was the biggest thing. And if you do something good, you put your heart and soul in it. Sure. And if you can't get out of it. Was it a different, like, culture when you went out to California? Because it obviously is much more liberal out there. You weren't in the deep south anymore. Were you more accepted out in California? No. <laughs> oh, really? No, no, I don't know. I'm asking you. No, I, you know... What got me really into it was I came when I came here seventy five. I remember standing by the door in goals, and I'm watching all the guys training, and I'm going like, "Wow, I'm Swastika, woo!" Then Denny Gable, yeah. oh my God, Ed Corny and Big Red, Kenny Wall. I'm looking at all these guys, and the Giuliani. I'm thinking like, "Wow, this is incredible." <laughs> That's what I thought. I was in a whole other world. Yeah. And then. Denny Gaber invited me in to work with him because we both stayed in the same complex right here in the middle of Venice. I still live right in Venice now. Oh, you're still and there? Wow, that's I'm still funny. in Venice. I love Venice. I thought that's where I grew up. Sure. We'll drive from my house. The first aerobics will be probably from my house all the way to Gold's Gym, which is like probably one, two, three, four blocks. Oh, wow. But I, that was my warm up. I go right into the gym and start training. <laughs> but Denny got me involved in it. I mean, it was, it was a. It was a, a heavy change over to me, Dave. And to be honest with you, I think it the that situation where you're talking about racism or jealousy went to another yeah. level. I wasn't used to it. Right. I, I didn't know how to handle it. I just kind of said, quiet. And that's why a lot of people say, well, he's arrogant. No, I'm not arrogant. I'm just guarded. Protect myself. Right. I stay in my mind. I don't let things peel me off and get me pissed off. I just stay in my energy field. So I think it's, it's, a, it, was a, it was a whole big change for me, but I grew into it. And I was, I'm, 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 I'm honored to have been a bodybuilder. I right. love it. I think it's awesome. It's, it's what one did, of the best, um, probably, go ahead. What was, uh, what was Arnold's uh, reaction to you when he first saw you? Do you remember? Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> was it, it was shocking because It was shocking because, you know, he was going out. This was his end. Okay? Right. He was going back, you know, going into the movie industry. He was already did pumping out, stay hungry, done successful with it, and he was moving it to a whole nother level. So in that process, uh, I was the new guy. Right. So Joe Levy was, uh, was out of it, and it was just basically myself then. I grew with the roots. And it was, it was an interesting experience because I got to train with the man. Incredible. Hard worker. I mean, nobody worked as hard as he did when you were in that gym. I... I can look back on it. It motivated me. I still have that same energy because you kill, you receive energy from other people. Sure. And he was a powerful energy to be around and train with him. Then he gave it Ed Corny. As I say, Ed Corny. Knows, we all know that he's passed away. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Ed. Yes. Yeah, Ed. he was a diamond. He's a, he's a, he's a, he was an incredible peel of energy in the gym. I remember walking in the gym and they were, we were all filming Pumping Iron, and he said to me, 
Uh, I, I remember seeing him in there just squatting. That was a flashback when everybody said he had passed away. That flashback came back to my mind, and I thought, wow, that's pretty freaking interesting. And I could see him doing that 12, 13, 14, 15. And then I'm seeing him taking in this breath, and he goes 6, 16, 17, 18, and then he him starting to grunt, 19, 20. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's what it takes to be a champion. You got to be better when you get tired. Was it? <laughs> was it? Was it tough competing? I mean, you and, and, and Ed were like neck and neck, especially in the, in the late 70s at the Olympia level. I mean, it was like Ed was behind you. You were, sec- you were first. Ed was winning set, coming in second. Or you mm-hmm. were second. He was third. I mean, mm-hmm. was there a lot of rivalry in that gym? Obviously, Zane in that mix no, as everybody well. No, I think everybody really wanted to come in at their very, very best. And, you know, we, we tried to duplicate our old self. I think that's what it was. I figured that if Lou was in it, I was in it, and, you know, Eddie Dim was in it, Boyer, I think it would be a great show. I thought everybody in that first Masters of the 94 were in awesome shape. It could have been anybody, seriously. Right. <laughs> were, were you, um, when you guys would get on stage, you know, and, and compete, and then the, obviously the results, obviously there were people that were happy, there were people that weren't happy. On Monday morning when you went back to the gym, was that all kind of left on the table, or would you guys – you know, have a little bit of animosity, you know, Monday morning, so no, to speak. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't have any with anybody because I knew that uh, during that, you know, do, having that show would mean that the uh, minor that Lou Ferrigno, you're talking about the Masters, right? No, not yet. I'm still talking about, like, the corny days with, okay, the, yeah. with the Frank Zane it, it, and that it, stuff. I mean, it, that was a robbery because everybody wanted to be in great shape. Right. And I think you, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to be nasty with that person. Just go in there and duplicate the word. And you're gonna have this awesome physique, and that's what everybody tried to do. Right. Have an awesome physique. I think a lot of people, and they ask me this question. I don't know the answer to it, and, and you're a very honest guy. So I'm gonna ask you, what what was the anabolic steroid scene like back in the day? I mean, at the, that point in time, they were legal, but what would, what were guys using? What would be a cycle back then, Robbie? You know, Dave and Otis, I think is it was. Decalorobin, 200 milligrams. Right. B12 and calcium intravenous. This was fed to you for 90 days. There was nothing else after that. You that's only it? Took that, Just DECA? That's it. You, you only took it twice a day. It did, you, you took that, uh, that's, that 200 milligrams of DECA, right. calcium B12 intravenous, and, um, and B12 intravenous, and then uh, you would do it again in another two weeks. Wow. That's what you were that, doing. I don't that, think you... Th- that, was, that's what I did. That's what I. That's the protocol I followed my whole career. <laughs> I never switched. I never switched to high dosages of anything. I knew that Decker Robbins in your body for almost two years. Yeah. So I figured after I come off of it, that's still the residue in the blood cell, in the blood and in the muscle cell, so I could still keep training, putting on muscle. This was my thinking, Dave. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can't believe it. Was, so you that, didn't do that. That's just how it was. You and didn't then, do the Dianabol tabs that they used? I know Arnold was big on the Dianabol tabs. It was available, but see, I didn't know about it yet. <laughs> had, but, you know, <laughs> I didn't. Let, I had experience with it. Uh, with it, I was basically using Deca, calcium B12 into Venus. Right. And then when you get closer to you, I would use calcium B12 glutathione into Venus. That's with it. With 200 mil, yeah, with 200 milligrams of Deca to Robin. That's, <laughs> what about like Prima? I would use Prima Bowl and maybe the. The prima bolin, prima bolin, depot prima bolin acetate were the anabolics that were used your last eight weeks before show. Gotcha. That so you it. would add prima bolin in. What about like yeah. Winstrel or Anavar? Any of that stuff? I, I hadn't got into my senses yet. I hadn't tried anything. Right. I, I, I didn't roll off into that until we got really into the um, the major shows like the Arnold Classic. That was like years later. Yeah, that was I, many years later. I had never even heard of, of Winstrel. <laughs> It didn't even come into my mind. Nobody <laughs> talked about it. It was B12, intravenous, glutathione, intravenous with <laughs> Deca the Robin. That's, That's right. It. Did, back then, what did you do? Just go into the pharmacy and buy it? Was it like, because it was legal, right? No, you know, not to call names or anything. We were all on the doctor. Oh, really? All, the doctors prescribed it to went, you? We all went to the same doctor. <laughs> That's how it was set up. And it, at that point, nobody talked about it. It was no name calling. Right. Uh, there's something I wouldn't do. Right. But, I mean, it, it definitely... It, I think it gave us that physique that I guess I'm since last a lifetime. I think seriously. I I believe that the reason why you guys look so good is because you guys trained so much harder back then because everyone thought it was the training and the eating, they, and, they, and, they, which it really is. Was, the training was awesome that 90 days going into it because you've eaten and trained heavy. 
uh, the time off. Uh, you've eaten a little bit different. You maybe right. add a little bit more bread, more meat or something like that. But then when it comes to that 90 days, the role switched. And sure. then it's all bodybuilding. Gotcha. You know, sets gotcha. and reps and heavy weight and low weight. And you're sticking to the basics. There were really no little cute exercises back in that time period. I love the it. Only, the, only, <laughs> the only machine they had was the Nautilus pullover machine in the corner of the gym. <laughs> that was it. Everything that was else a good was machine. That, that became an iconic machine because Dorian Yates made it famous back in the 90s. You exactly. Know. That, that, uh, that was all that was happening in that man. Uh, <laughs> nobody... We, we train extremely hard. I, I, I still have that same drive, Dave. I still want to really? go and get that wow. 18, 15, 20 sets. I still want to do that. Nowadays, do you take any, any hormone replacement or do you just go natural? I do what? Are you on any hormone replacement nowadays or are you just natural still? Dave, you know what? The thing that I use and I've been using now since I uh, got out of the bottom and retired was I go and get what you call it... Um, Three cc's of glutathione intravenous. Right. I get calcium, B12, amino acids. Right. No, no hormones though. No hormone. Ascorbic acid intravenous. That's well, it. Are you so you like you believe you're a big believer in the intravenous vitamins? I, I do believe in it because it gives the body when you when you do it it definitely your muscle cells because it hasn't been done. To swell up. It almost give you that almost the size of bodybuilding because they're giving you such massive dosages that right. the body just picks up on your body, blood streaming, your blood and the muscle cells pick up on it. It flushes everything into the cell. Dave, that's why. And when people see me in the gym, you, I hear a lot of guys say steroid, but so they don't realize that I know how to pose. I know how to get that muscle to look right. a certain way. I've trained it for years, right. so I know what I'm doing when I sit there and show myself. What do you, What do you weigh nowadays? What's your weight, Robbie? I think he froze. I think we lost him. Robbie? I'm right here. Oh, sorry. What, what are you weighing these days? So, one more time. What are you weighing these days on the scale? How much are you weighing? Mm. Are you over 200, under 200 pounds? What do you weigh? Okay, we back. Okay. Let's say that again, Dave. What do you weigh, Robbie? I weigh 205, Dave. You might not believe it. I weigh the same weight I weighed when I came here at 75. Unbelievable. Pounds. So 205 pounds. And it fluctuates 25, maybe 28. If I eat a nice, big, healthy sesame seed bagel, it might go up to 210. <laughs> but I always, I've always, my skin, I've never, what you call it, gained a lot of mass. I've just always had big muscles. That's you're, what I think is the, the you're, biggest you're thing. A genetic, I, you're a genetic freak, Robbie. Yeah, Robbie, yeah. let's go back to 1994. Lou Ferrigno makes his comeback. Uh, originally, he Ooh. signed with the WBF. Then Weeder gets him back. They create the Masters Olympia. It looks like they're looking for a way to give uh, Ferrigno this Olympia title. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Robbie Robinson appears. Now, is it true that they had to like take a helicopter up to the top of Mount Everest and find you? Where were you? <laughs> I was in Norway. Okay, you what know, were you I doing over there? I was traveling, you know, doing exhibitions and seminars all through this, up from, from Norway to Switzerland to Sweden and Germany, um, France. I was all over. I lived in Europe for almost, what, 12 years. Oh, just I didn't traveling know that. And doing ex Yeah, doing exhibitions and seminars. So when they, who, who, who found you? Wayne Demilia. I was in Norway <laughs> and a bodybuilder friend of mine that I trained with said, hey, Robbie, um, Wayne the mayor want you to call him, and I said, "Okay, <laughs> cool. I wonder what he want. I wonder what he want, right?" Yeah. And um, I called him, and he said, "Robbie, they gonna have a Master Smith Olympia. I want you to come down and him." And I said, "Cool. I'll take that. And maybe this is my chance to win a Mr. Olympia title. I mean, a Sandow right. title." <laughs> that yeah. was my thinking on it. And I started training right away, Dave. I just went into it. I think I got into one of my best shapes in, in winning the title. You did. But everybody, everybody knew that the show was basically set for, for Lou Ferrigno. Right. I, uh, I, was, I mean, when they gave me the title and they called my name, I was shocked because I knew that it was set for him to win it. And it, I mean, they was trying to create another Arnold type fish, which I think he deserved it. I mean, he had really been successful with the, with the Hulk and everything. So him actually winning that title was to, and rebuild his name in the sport of bodybuilding. And then he would have been able to go on with his new his next career in the movies. Was he mad? Was he? Did you guys have bad blood after you beat him that year? 
I think he felt a little bit bad about it. I didn't. I just didn't react to it, Dave. Uh, I knew he knew too that you know he was supposed to be his title. Uh, we were standing on stage, and the um, the the head judge announced the first Master of your 1994. Everybody in the audience that ooh, the judge said Robbie Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> that was nobody said anything. The audience was silent. They everybody got up and left the auditorium. Oh, really? Check, yeah. Check this out. And the night that was to be a band quit. There was no band quit that night. Oh, really? Oh, my God. And, uh, see, nobody even talked about all that stuff. But I didn't know. I, didn't, I wasn't yeah, there. I know a lot of people don't know that, but it, that was no band quit that night. And I went to the food and had my sit down at the table and ate. <laughs> <laughs> what did and you win, food. What did you win I, for I, that Masters Olympia? Huh? How much did you win for that Olympia? Oh, that was 25000 Oh, that's nice. Yeah, twenty five. That was it. See, nobody. That the part they got me, Dave. Nobody else got any money. That I know. You, no I money. remember I, that. I felt bad about it because I said twenty five thousand. I thought the twenty five thousand would be Lou ten. Right. Whoever come in second, maybe five. Yeah. Then maybe thirty five hundred. Then maybe two thousand. Maybe a thousand. That's how I saw it. Yeah. But the whole twenty five thousand went to me, and I've been waiting for them to say, uh, "Boy, you're cold." <laughs> five thousand. Yeah. But I thought, wow, they gave me the whole check. Yeah. And that, that to me was not a good thing. I didn't think that was nice. I thought yeah. we used to spread the money out, not yeah. give it all to one person. What, Robbie? How many weeks had you prepared for that show? Ninety days. It took me ninety days. Ninety prepare. days. That's it. Ninety. Days. Because I always stay in shape, Dave. I'm always. Oh my God. Close to being in shape, I enjoy it. And I think that's one of my reasons for you know, still looking like this because I kind of really took bodybuilding as a, as a healthy thing. I didn't really right. take it of it as a thing where you that I had to use something to make me better. Sure. But I experienced it. It was a great experience. I came out of it healthy. Right. No heart problems and liver problems and kidney problems and no diseases. Today. So I feel blessed, seriously. What? What? Tell it. What did you take to prepare for the '94 Olympia? We know what you took back in the '70s. Was the drug regimen a little different for the for the '94? No, it was basically pretty much the same thing. <laughs> I really, I really didn't graduate from that part of it. I think I got into a little bit more the last was it the last eight weeks in Germany. I had picked up something called Prima Bolin acetate, right? Which actually makes you harder, kept sure. the water come out of the body. I think that's those were the only thing I used. I just really didn't <laughs> differentiate. I never took testosterone. I never got into it. Never? I just never. What never about got growth hormone? It. So again, I've never taken it either. Wow. I've never taken growth hormone. And I always thought that, but you know, that would be pretty. It's like, I wonder what it does to your body. But I just never tried it, Dave. I didn't I, know you probably how to would use have been it. like Ronnie Coleman had you taken all that stuff that all the other guys have taken. Unbelievable. I, just, I, didn't, I didn't think in terms of it making me better. I knew that it was the hard work that was going to make me better. Right. But um, I just really never made the changes into all of that stuff. Right. I really never got deep into it. Uh, today I see the bottle's got 250 milligrams or something in it. I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> um, never taken anything like that. Now, and I think that's re I really, I'm not saying that it's because I'm, I'm, I'm still a very healthy person. I think, I think the body responds to things in lower dosages. I, it, you got to put in the you yeah. got to put in the work. You got to make put the work lower in. dosages. Yeah, make you those put lower the work dosages in. work. And I, I still follow that protocol. I just never wanted to change it. Work for me. So I think everybody has to find what works for them. Yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah. I think you uh, you're yeah. obviously a genetically gifted individual, but I, I agree with you. I think a lot of people are not working hard enough, and they're not following a good diet, and they're trying yeah. to make up for it with with extra drugs. And I think that's yeah. that's been the problem. I, mean, I think I think, and that's what created a lot of problems. I mean. You know, you, you, I'm, I've noticed that you know, more and more guys are, you know, becoming ill and dying and young age. And it's just like yeah. freaking me out. I'm looking at this. I'm saying, hey, that doesn't propose to be happening. Bodybuilding is about health and fitness and nutrition and being in your best shape. And use that stuff, but, you know, be cautiously using it. And if you're going to use it, I'll tell you one of the best things a bodybuilder can do for his body is take care of his kidneys and liver and his inner health. And I think that in itself will help regenerate that body and give that body, you know, 
definitely keeping good solid shape. What, what do you think, Robbie, are the most important things for liver, kidney uh, health in the body? Like, what, what would you recommend? I, I know you're a well, very holistic guy. Yeah, guy. very holistic. I, I, I've used glutathione for years. Because I like glutathione, too. I agree. It, yeah, yeah it, is a, it is a supplement that you really won't find in the amino acid. But what it does, it works in the in the bloodstream almost like fly paper by going through the bloodstream and cleaning up all the garbage and bacteria sure. in the bloodstream. So I and the liver and the kidneys. So I have not I use a herb called Eurovirus, which actually flushes the kidneys. If whatever water weight you might be carrying is flushes that water weight off. Mm. Uh, Eurovirus is, is something and I mix that along with milk thistle, which actually strengthens both the livers and the kidneys. Mm. I've been using that stuff day fifty years. You're talking about Uva Ursi? Is that the, the and, yeah. and the uh, and, 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 and the uh, milk tips I've been using that dandelion root stuff for like fifty years, and I think that it's really working. pays a Dave. It really does play a role in the body's health and longevity. Seriously, people say it don't work, but medicines are made from herbs, so that's my whole concept on it. So yeah. if you're using that stuff in the right dosages, and um, it definitely heals the body. I'm seriously, I seriously believe that. I'm looking at myself today, and I'm thinking, like, wow. <laughs> now, you look you well, look amazing, man. I, you're going to live to, like, yeah, you're going to be Jack Lane. You're going to live to 100, for sure. Yeah, and, and I, um, you know, I, I feel young. I don't feel like 73 years old. Dave. No. I mean, energetic. Um, my testosterone level is to the moon. Um, I feel I feel alive and in you know, want to do good things. That's basically where I am at this point. Love it. Life. Love it. Now, Robbie, um, you know, when you made that comeback in 94, it kind of revitalized your bodybuilding because you, you kept competing after that. You in '97 you won the Masters 50 over uh, mm -hmm. Olympia. What what gave you that like second win, so to speak, to give you that 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 because it was kind of like a second career for you because you kind of were yeah. out of the out of the game yeah, for a while yeah. and then you came back and, I, you, and you you loved it again, huh? That's what I thought. I thought it, I thought so too, Dave. I thought it was a, it was a great time for me to come back in there because I really thought I had really taken care of myself. I really thought I had taken a, done a good job and took care of myself, and my liver and kidneys. I always went to the VA hospital because I'm a veteran, had those things checked out. Um, I made sure that I you know, stayed on my regime where I can build muscle and burn fat. I've never been overweight, so I think that's one reason that my skin has a stretch uh, or it's heavy sure. or saggy. Really, I think all of that's bad. I take a lot of cold showers, which stimulates the body's testosterone and Increase the body's burning of the brown fat in the body. I've been doing all these things, Dave, since I was, I mean, God, for, I'm going to say 30, 40 years. Did you learn that from Serge Nubre? Because Serge Nubre was a big guy. To, he used to go, train and then he'd go outside in the freezing cold in France and, uh, and he, he believed in the whole shivering mechanism. Yeah, it, it works, Dave. I mean, people say, oh, muscularity and definition and, you know, separation. I think all of that plays a role in it, but that exactly about how you treat that body. If you treat the body bad, it's going to give you bad results. If you mm -hmm. treat it beautifully, it's going to respond in a positive way. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Would you ever make another another appearance on a bodybuilding stage, you know, at, at the age of maybe no, Dave, 80? Dave, I, I love it. You know, of course, you know, you're, as you say, it's, it's in your blood. It hits you every, hit me every dime now and then. But yeah. I think Facebook and Instagram give me a, a, a showcase where I can display it and I don't have to be up there. I don't have to use the animal bottles. I can just do what I'm doing. And yeah. As I say, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the body re, re, uh, regenerate itself every 21 days. So yeah. I basically take pictures every 21 days, sometimes a little bit more to see how I'm looking. Right. And then every 20 days, I go a good shot. So what they're doing is getting a good time Muscular pumped up this <laughs> I'm 50 years old, Robbie. I look at your pictures. I want to throw up at myself because you look so good. <laughs> Dave, that's, you know, I'm glad it motivates people to inspire people. But that's basically what that's my competition. Right, yeah. inspiring all the guys out there and yeah. getting them going and giving them talking and you know they, they come in buy my t-shirts and pictures and posters <laughs> and I just came out with a new app, Masterclass app, where you can come to me online and chat with me and talk about your training. Oh, that's yeah, good. How do people yeah. how do people sign up for that at the app store? Yeah, we, we just went live with the app, and I think we got something like over three, four hundred. I think it's three hundred and fifty people already have come in and signed up for the wow. app. Wow, good uh, for you. And then and the masterclass app is just like uh, I think the, the overall app is like nine ninety nine. You got nine ninety nine for mm -hmm. um for uh, for for one month, and you want to renew it, you can renew it. And right. I have the master's class where you can come and chat and talk to me about your training. If you're getting close to a competition, you need something to be inspired or motivated. 
You can call Robbie in 1999. You can see that with the whole time you prepare for the show. I love it. You, you see, you're, you're <laughs> up with the technology. You told me you didn't know technology. You got technology. You got your own app, man. You, you, you know, David, I have a great team of people behind me. Paul, Stefan, you saw him, Ben, Jane, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Mr. Omaka, who's actually out of uh, England and Norway. I mean, out of England and right. um, uh, India. So I have a great team of people behind mm. me really trying to promote me and push me out there by myself. Right. I'm really not. I think we uh, lost Robbie there. I'm, I'm so, when I look at Robbie's pictures on Facebook, literally, I, I look at myself. I'm like, I, I look like dog shit. This guy is so lean and muscle bellies are so round. He doesn't have a piece of loose skin anywhere in his body. It, it, it's a testament to great genetics, yes but living the lifestyle. This guy has never stopped living the lifestyle. He's 73 years of age. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you, you, you're a testament to the fact that if you dedicate yourself to the lifestyle, the lifestyle will pay you back, Robbie, exactly. with looking great. Thank you, Dave, I totally appreciate it. Yeah, I know we're having a little uh, difficulty with the, uh, with the connection here, but Robbie, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is people always, I love the camaraderie that you guys had back in that original Gold's Gym. I look back at the pictures and I, I feel the nostalgia. I feel how awesome it was. Was there ever a time where guys would get on each other, like where there'd be fights in the gym or, or anything like that? Because you guys were a very close-knit group, but you're, you know, when you're, when you're in the gym every single day with each other, you get annoyed with each other sometimes. Was there ever arguments and stuff like that? You know, what, what it was, Dave, it was like challenges. When I came there at 75 and I, after that, it was a challenge. You had to be, you had to be challenged to, by everybody. Kenny Waller challenged me. I mean, you have Ed Corny doing the same thing. You have all the challenges of me on the legacy machine. You had Kenny Waller challenging me on the bench press, dumbbell press, <laughs> uh, dumbbell press. You got Franco doing deadlifts and standing up doing 15 reps of 10. They all challenged me. So it right. actually, I think, had a positive effect on me physically and mentally. It strengthened me per se as a person, seriously. Right. You have to be around good fields of energy to, I think, to, Im to improve yourself. You need to see someone else doing something that's better than you, and you empower yourself by observing it and getting a part of it. Who was the strongest guy in the gym uh, back when you were training in the 70s? Kenny Waller. Kenny Waller was like beyond your imagination. 150, he started with a 150 pound dumbbell. Wow. He was just incredibly strong. He was one of the people that push me to you know do the same thing you had to do some weight some reps with the weight that he chose and 150 pound dumbbell i never lifted 150 pound dumbbells in my life but when i was working <laughs> with him when i was working with him i duplicated that you know, I right. one or two reps but he's getting five six seven eight and that's the, that was a powerful effect on my mind that you have to really get in there and work definitely stick with the basic machines yeah. are okay it should be used when you're maybe not feeling too well in that movement or whatever, but mm -hmm. it should be a rotation and change a lot of variety. Robbie, why was it that the guys back in the 70s didn't have good legs? What, how come the leg development wasn't up to par with you guys' upper bodies at that time? Was it the, that the training knowledge wasn't as good? What do you think? I think a lot of it was just that we weren't really, we were into more shaping and having deep separation in between the muscle groups. So we built the whole body on actually having um, you know, an uh, overall oh, oh, pleasing you know, picture, poetic, uh, I was a poetic uh, um, physique. We always wanted to look, have the best body on stage. Everybody had that same attitude. Right. The leg work was definitely, we definitely dwelled in the squats, leg press. We did the same exercises, but the body at that point, um, we didn't over it. Right. Overdo it. We underdid it, I think, in a lot of ways. So you think it was purposely done? Because, you know, Tom Platts had the huge legs, but no one else back then had those legs. That's right. Because Tom would go in that gym. He's a maniac. He would, <laughs> in that gym and, he would go in that gym and tear it up with those quads. I mean, <laughs> nobody. He would take 500 pounds and do 100 reps with a weight. That was right. just how Tom mindset was. Absolute beast, just like Michael O'Hearn, Kenny Waller. Yeah. I mean, all, all those guys, you know, put their, their, their whole self into what they were doing. And that was, and that's how they get, all got results. Do you think that? Myself. Do you think Tom Platts had the best legs of all time? You know, I, I, I saw. I thought it was between him and Paul DeMeo. DeMeo had good legs. You're right. Yeah, you know? that's that's. I thought those two, DeMeo came the closest. If sometimes if you look at DeMeo and Tom, 
uh, I mean, it was it was hard to make a choice right. because they were both incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who, who had the best arms? I think you had some of the best arms, but who would you say had the best I, arms I, I of all time? I, I can put myself in that group. I think Arnold, myself, um, I think Freddie Ortiz. Yeah. I think all of the guys, um, who else? Um, Sergio Olivia. I Coleman. Mean, they all had incredible, incredible. Larry Scott. Come on now, the list is long there with them great arm things. Yeah. So I think that was a whole list of them. I wouldn't put myself in the top anywhere. I would say I'm in that mix. Yeah, you're definitely, exactly. you, you had some yeah. great arms back then, man. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. Yeah. Um, if you had to give advice to, to, to uh, the generation of bodybuilders that are coming up now, like, like just words of wisdom, something that you learned over the years that maybe you can now look back and, and tell the youth, hey, this is what you should do. What are some of the most important things that they should focus on from a bodybuilding perspective getting into the sport nowadays? You got to work. You got to put in the work. You got to really put in the work if you're trying to achieve something. And you have to set a pattern of put it in that work. It's just not something you can do sometimes. You have to set a pattern. And the more you follow that pattern, you develop that whole sense of yourself where you can duplicate that and do that. Mm. Nutrition. Nutrition that's by par. You can't hanky-panky with your diet. I mean, you have to play it all the way out. You have to put all the time into it. I mean, you have to switch the foods, use different varieties, different weight. So food, I weigh the majority of my food. So I know what I'm eating on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sometimes I will do more or more, probably a little bit less, but that's the that's what I think my body needs to actually re- keep reduplicating itself. So, supplementation, supplementation, forget about it. Glutamine, creatine, people say that stuff don't work. I'm a living proof it work because yeah. your body definitely picks up if you do that, that's again, a lot of rotation with it. It's not something you want to do 365, but then you can come pretty close to all of that. Right. It's just keeping that body nourished, especially before and after training. I think that was the biggest role. But before you go to bed on an empty stomach, this is my own my things that I apply. I take glutamine probably 30 grams a day. You know, wow, sometime, really? Okay. Sometimes 40. Sometimes 40 because I'm older and I figure that if I keep that body in that anabolic state, I'm going to always be building muscle and burning fat. That's my whole concept. My body, when you take glutamine and all these different mixtures, uh, glutamine is one of the best things to stimulate J's release. So mm-hmm. I use all these things in high doses sometimes. Back in leg days, I use a high doses. But tricep, bicep, I've used a lower dose. I just go back and forth like that with anything I do. Right. So Robbie, I think that's why my body... Go ahead. Have you ever even been in the hospital? Have you ever even gotten sick where you had to go to the hospital ever? Sick? Like, you know, some people have to go to the emergency room. Or Have you ever been in a hospital? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, for me, it's... it's, it's I, you're amazing. I never, get sick. I never get sick. I never get cold. I never get flus. I never, you know, feel bad or down or depressed. I, you know, I just don't. I think, and again, I think it's definitely all boils down to what I've been doing for the last 60 years. Seriously. It is. It's like Jack Lane, the black you Jack are. You're the. You're right. You are the modern day Jack Lane. You're 100%. Yeah, I, I, that's, that was my whole, I wanted to be healthy when I came out of bodybuilding. I did not want to have any problem with my kidneys and liver. And I, I think that was one of the reasons my health was more important to me than anything. That's what I was thinking when I came into it. And I still feel that way, my well, health. Yeah, health, is, health is well. People can say you can have all the money in the world, but if you're, you're not, your health is not good, you piss. You're depressed. Right. You're down. Yeah. And me, I never get like this. I never get depressed or down about anything, baby. I've never gone, I've gone, been to the hospital for a flu shot. I told the guy I wouldn't take it. <laughs> I feel healthy, so ain't no sense of me taking no flu shots. No, you're right. I got my own flu shots. You don't even need it. it. Yeah. What? Uh, who do you think was the greatest Mr. Olympia of all time in your mind? You know, Dave, I like him all. You could say all because he won it seven times. He came back and had his win, the seventh win. Um, and you could say, uh, what is it, um, Phil Heath, who... You could say a number of the guys that had long way de- hey. I think they all yeah. are incredible bodybuilders. They all had great shape. They came in all in great condition for the length of time that they were winning. I, mean, I can put all of them in, in, uh, you know, on, in, in first place, all of them, because it takes a lot of work right. to get that body to respond like that, to be a Miss Olympic for five, six. Sonny, uh, uh, Ronnie Coleman, all these, uh, those guys, I mean, they, they put a lot of time and effort into all of yeah. that. And they reap the resources. Right. 
Well, Robbie, I want, I want to really thank you for taking time and enlightening us about what it was like back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, all the way up to the present. Uh, you know, you're, you're a, a living testament that, you know, good, healthy eating, training, yeah. supplementation really does not only give you a great physique, but also makes you healthy and live a, a very happy and, you know, well-balanced lifestyle. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. what it's all that about. Yeah, that's, that's why I came up with that Monica, uh, you know, Mr. Lifestyle, because that's exactly what it is. It's a beautiful art. I love it. I, the barbells and dumbbells are your paintbrushes. You can do whatever you want. It. You're the artist. You can create your own physique. It takes time and patience, but that's anything that's short-lived, you're not going to get too much out of it. Yeah. But I think if you put the time and effort into something, you'll get the results. Seriously. Well, best of luck. And, of course, Thanks. good luck. If anyone wants to sign up Thank for the guys. app, the app is called, what, the Master App? It's a masterclass app. It's on my Facebook and Instagram page. I'm looking for everybody to download it. If you're in competition and you're trying to prepare or get yourself or you need a positive input, call me. Download my app. I got news for you. There's a lot of guys out there that are mental, that have mental problems, you know, with, with getting ready for a show. I think that you'd be a great mentor to oh, them. You'd be a great. It. I would love. It. They call. They come to me, Dave. I would love to do it. I think it's awesome because. That's what you need at that point. You need yeah. somebody that's going to lift you up. Yeah. Definitely. Very I think important. I think Kai Green should contact you because he can use some of your um, positive mindset there. Well, I would love to speak with the guy. I think he has an incredible physique. He's an incredible poser. I mean, he's up there. He's an artist. He put in a lot of time and effort in what he does. And he shouldn't be hired on. He should come back and kick booty. He should make the <laughs> comeback like Robbie Robinson did that's win right. the Olympia with Robbie by his side. He's got I mean, to get you by his side. Oh, yeah. If he come in every way, I think he should come in there. But nobody beat the guy. He's incredible. Yeah, I agree. Incredible bodybuilder. I agree. Well, Robbie, thank you so Thanks, much. Guys. And uh, best of thank luck. You too, and uh, we'll have to have you back on for more definitely. stories. Definitely. I will look forward to it. You have a great day, Dave. All right. And Audience. that's going to take us to the end of another episode, guys, of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Robbie. Bye-bye.